Hey Kim, uh, you're on uh, speaker, and we have uh, a lot of folks here at the meeting, so you're on live. Oh wow, that's cool. Welcome to uh, Greg and uh, your, uh, your team. So, uh, would you like to begin the presentation, please? Um, sure. From the slides, of Greg. Yes, uh, Greg Berkland, Washington, Illinois. Shannon Hoffer, Illinois. It'll actually on the first slide with uh, the Betty Jane. Okay. So I'm Pete Lincoln Staff, I'm from uh, Spring Bay, and so let's go to the uh, next slide, development intent. When I made my presentation, I said uh, the intent was to listen, collaborate, preserve, create, enhance our village. And this is the first of what I think will be a lot of meetings about uh, what we're doing. I think you can see that the Betty Jane could have uh, closed quite nicely. Thanks to Farnsworth, we have some wonderful new renderings on the landscaping will locate enhancements to it. That will be the subject of a uh, upcoming meeting as we get closer. Tonight I'm going to talk more about the Great Lakes side of the law and the intent there. And then I'll also introduce to you the concept of turning the pump out to the mail index uh, restaurant. So, to the Great Lakes side of the law, Concept there, Greg, did that fly up? Yes, it is. Yeah, the concept is to combine retail, commercial, and residential on the site that's not from the trust to do something. I know there's a, a lot of concern about site lines, but I want to talk more about how that will be enhanced if you, you preserve the site lines to trust to do, and I'll explain more about the site right now. The next slide, Greg, can you bring it up? Yes, we have it. <laughs> So we're looking at an aerial view of this, and it is a long prospect on the left, and it's trapped to on the right. And if you look closely, there's the residential, you'll see it in the back, and the retail is in the, in the front. You see retail, retail, retail. And you'll see the, uh, the orange uh, sort of hatched area, those are walk-through spaces. The important thing to know is this is not one structure. This is actually looking to three, four, five different structures. And the concept is that from trust here, you'll be looking through five different sight lines that are about 20, to, I'm sorry, one, two, three, yeah, one, two, three, four sight lines. That'll be about 20 to 30 feet wide, and it'll be very translucent. You'll see that on the uh, retail side, prospect, that's about 20 feet, feet high, I think, uh, Greg, which is about consistent with something the way it is now. And then behind that would be stacked residential um, homes, about 10. Each of the homes have their own parking under the underground, and in front of each of the garages, the underground parking will be parking for guests, so we're providing quite a bit of parking space there. If you look to the right, you'll see that there are parking courts there. That would be for the uh, commercial space on the street, and also for trucks to do it. I believe there's about 24 spaces there. So all in all, I think we're providing about 30 some spaces here that are off the street. Plus there could be uh, street parking as well. One of the things that is important to note is that we haven't yet decided that all materials, these can be very translucent glass. They'll be consistent with traffickers. The heights uh, from, from the uh, uh, street buildings are very consistent with all your uh, existing buildings. Uh, again, they're only about 22 feet high. And so that is the final layout. And you can see we're going all the way out to uh, uh, Viola Avenue there. And the sight lines as you drive into the, into the heights from Prospect, you look over the building and see truck signals. You go back to that first courtyard and you see it. You see truck signals of the second, third, fourth courtyards as you drive by because this is not one massive structure. It is five separate st structures. So I'd like to open up the questions right now on, on that issue of sight lines to uh, trespassers. and other questions, Mike, that you'd like to ask? Well, I'd like to interject, you know, Mike, Kim. Uh, on the parking, we have the parking in front for retail. And again, which you alluded to, we'll also have the resident or uh, uh, customer park in the back. And those will be at a 93 angle. You get more parking in that uh, facility back there. And again, it's about 24, four, 
about 24 spots back there. Uh, when, when we're looking at the retail, the front of that retail will be like a stair step, if you can kind of envision that in your head. The first uh, step will be the uh, retail, which is 21 feet. Then we have the offset, which will be pushed back as far as the residential homes, closer to the, the trusters. So that way your sign of light is more visible to their, their property. And again, uh, Kim alluded to uh, 32 feet. And as you can see there, uh, it's uh, five uh, units that we'll have. The green space, that walkway, is 21 feet in width by 75 feet in length. So as a developer, we're giving up about 1,600 square feet of, of space that can be retail or home, whatever it is, allow that flow from Prospect. And actually on the other side of the Prospect, you know, we're looking at uh, options over there. So we want to make sure that we're, we're good neighbors and that there is a flow of traffic, both foot, bicycle, uh, coming across from the other side where Save Lot is. So. So I'll open it up to anybody that has any questions. Questions, anyone? And then we'll open it back up for public comment if anyone wants to make a comment for the record to the board. <laughs> what was the size of the, uh, you said 21 feet by, for the green space or the space? 21 by 16? 21 by 75 feet. 75, okay. Yeah, cool. so it, it's actually 1,600 square feet of, of space. So for each, each spot? Then? No, uh, this right here is 21 feet in width and 75 feet. No, okay, all right. Go from Prospect okay. to the Trusker's property. Okay. And so again, we'll have our parking back here, which will not be fenced off or anything like that, so it's free flowing back and forth. I have a question. So the access to Trusker's, will there still be access between the new development and, say, the gas station? That's a good, yeah, that, that's actually a very good question. Uh, that easement is actually uh, uh, on our property and we don't plan on building up to that at all, so we're going to keep that open for flow. So if I'm not mistaken, I think there's there are people that are parking there right now on the north side of that parking lot that faces the uh, gas station. Okay, so you're going to keep some kind of, a, how, how much space will there be? Will there be some kind of a little parking area plus a road or just a road? That I'm not sure because I know we're on easement with the city and I don't <coughs> I honestly, I don't know. I didn't know we had an easement there. I know it's... Huh. Yeah. We have storm drains that go under there or something? Water mains? Something? I, I don't know if the legal description shows an easement. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it does. Okay, Mike, let me just say the next step on the gray boy is actually to create a uh, computer rendering. We will uh, take photographs and do topographical studies of the site. There's about a four foot drop from Prospect back to the, uh, you know, the parking space of our trucks is. And what we'll do is we'll overlay our computer renderings over the uh, photographs of the uh, trucks of the building so you can absolutely see these sidelines just like it's going to be built. So that's my intended next step. So what we have is the abandoned clubhouse. I shouldn't say that's so you to try to move people off. Anyway. The idea here is this is a very historical building. Mayor Beck Brothers built this building back in, I think, 1932 or 34 with WPA money during the Depression. And so this is one of uh, Franklin Roosevelt's pet projects, which is bring, you know, really nice architecture to communities for community purposes. And what we intend to do is uh, create a, a restaurant and a uh, entertainment complex. Very tasteful. This is not a rock and roll venue. This is going to be a very, very tasteful venue. If you look uh, then at the Neil Brown Brothers uh, aerial photograph, you'll see we have a uh, wonderful building to the left. We have a garage and we have a water tank. And the idea is to make the complex that is a restaurant um, uh, center there out of both the garage and the existing pump house, and then improve that water tank to make it be. Um, an event center for corporations that want to be out in the heights and entertain their guests that will be staying at the atrium. Next slide, you see some of the uh, sort of the uh, character intent there. Um, it's a beautiful building on the left or left. That is actually a shop from down where the water valves were. You see that door there? That would be where the kitchen goes. Upstairs will be dining, downstairs will be dining. You see that sort of sad old uh, you know, insulation on the, on the ceiling there, that will be all wood. 
<laughs> and we will review that right back of the city clerk uh, scheme on the, uh, on the structural steel there. The next slide is another shot of the water tower, oh, sorry, water tank. You see, sort of how it's it. It's actually a bunker, if you wanted to know. We did a little bit of work on it. It's a solid concrete. Uh, it was designed to hold gallons of you know, water that are very heavy. So, um, structurally, it is um, a bombshell. So, the next slide, as you look at it, what you're looking at is that tank from Euclid. And the concept is to provide uh, for the neighbors on the right a privacy wall. There'll be a terrace for outside in the summer uh, for, uh, for dining. And then you can see how we're going to open up the uh, water tank windows and doors and make it into an event center for corporate, uh, corporate sponsors that want to be out in the heights and they have the folks staying in the hotel. So this is a great, great bonus work. Uh, it's early on, but it, uh, I believe it works. I've talked to Josh Adams, who, who ran in June, and he's very interested in uh, operating the restaurant there again. And this would be the subject of a, uh, a lease uh, from the city to me. And so you'll have to decide on that, whether you want to do that. But that view is from Euclid, and if you're looking there and you turn around, there's an empty lot there that I bought that will be the parking of the complex. The next slide is an aerial view of it, best we can do, but you can see how that lays out. I believe you put it on the right and the, uh, what is the other street there on the left, Mike? I don't think it that is. Kingman. Oh, uh, the uh, Euclid? There you go. All right. All right. So that is the concept of what I want to do there. And um, Dr. Adams and my interest in doing this. Um, this would be a lease to me. And then it would be a sub lease to Josh or whatever owner operator wants to um, you know, come in and do that. But this is designed to be an elegant, very, very neighborhood friendly dining area. In the summer, we will have outdoor patio dining. Uh, we'll improve the front. We will not change the look of it. That's we're going to enhance that water tank. The model for what I'm thinking, if you want to look at it, it is down in the uh, waterworks, uh, down on the river. There's another old water tank there, and it's beautiful. It has tile on the roof, it has brick on the side, and it has windows in it. And that is the model for what we want to try to do there for the event center for the company in that uh, project. Okay. Well, let's, let's keep taking questions then on, on the project itself. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone in the audience have questions? Yes. Um, sure, like the, we were just wondering what, you know, what type of a restaurant is it going to be? Is it going to be a daytime or an evening restaurant also? Kim, the, the question was what type of a restaurant will it be? Well, what, what I'd like to see is sort of a very elegant country, French, all of the rain kind of a place where, you know, during the summer it opens up out for brunch and lunches, and, you know, then we can also use the water tank as an incentive for like every clothes company and OSF and all those others. So it's going to be a very low key, friendly neighborhood kind of restaurant like I, I see in Germany where people can actually walk and have a meal and walk home. And so, it is not going to be a rowdy place. It's going to be what I would call, you know, sort of like art. Very elegant. Very elegant. Yeah, we already have enough restaurants that are open all evening. So I didn't, I mean, I would think it would not want to just be open in the evening. It would want to be open during the day. So that's what I was kind of concerned about. In terms of uh, hours of operation, days of the week, you know, we don't know yet. We have to sort of go into the vehicle. You know, come. Uh, but so certainly, it, 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 it's not going to be a rowdy bar place uh, that has banners that that's not being banned. Yeah, I hope not because I'm only a house away over there. So, yeah. The privacy fence, what kind of privacy fence will that be? Just a regular privacy fence? And, and that's uh, uh, that's some of the questions. So, there's, there's several neighbors uh, that are going to be your neighbors in that neighborhood that. Yeah. As you know, it's a very few quiet neighborhoods, so they're, they're somewhat concerned. And um, anything else you might be able to say to alleviate any, any fears that they have? 
Well, well, I live off the street, man. I'm not going to be around in place. Yeah, the privacy fences are going to be very important. They do this in Germany. And uh, restaurants are very good neighbors uh, to the residents. And it's it just as a warm feel when you can just walk up the street and have a meal. And, uh, you know, everybody knows you. And so that's the thing there. The, the landscaping, the, the village uh, has not done the best job of keeping up the landscaping. Do you have a landscape plan for that, that entire site? Yeah, no, there, there will be a landscape plan. You know, that tree is, um, the roots are all exposed, it's dying from the inside, so unfortunately that has to come down. But uh, it will be all landscape, and again, that outdoor area that will be, you know, vacant during the winter, will be a nice summer outdoor place so, you know, and a lot of heat. So, yeah, it will be totally landscape, it will be landscape on both sides. Um, we're not changing any of the materials, in fact, we're going to enhance it. I think the coolest thing is the fact that we're going to take the, uh, the garage and incorporate it into the pump house and the breezeway there for an entrance, and it will have a roll up door and uh, I'll go down in the summertime. There's no heat, but it's going to be utilized uh, rather than uh, being sort of nice or Ken, uh, since uh, Greg's here and you're not um, after the meeting, would it be okay if Greg got the contacts for some of the neighbors and had a, a follow-up meeting with them, are you okay with that? Oh, that'd be great. I really appreciate all the input. Like I said at the beginning, my intent is to listen, you know, good for you to come here with you, uh, about. Yeah, I appreciate that because I did talk to several of my neighbors that are in the immediate areas. I did mention that they're going to have some of the neighbors that are in the immediate so if you get your contact to, to, to Greg, we'll make sure he has a meeting with all the neighbors and yeah. okay. we can use the same thing to yeah. All right, that sounds fine. Any other questions and we'll take public comment. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a public comment. If anyone wants to be on the record uh, for or against any of these projects, please come forward and give your name. Uh, Jeff Heebner and Martha Heebner. Uh, we own Dresser's Bakery and we live right here in Peoria Heights. Um, and I'm going to address the, uh, uh, the council here that you probably all got our email that we sent out over the weekend. And uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, but we do, you know, we do have some concerns. And seeing the presentation that was shown tonight um, makes us feel a little bit better. We still are concerned about a two-story brick building right in front of the bakery. Um, the line of sight might be a lot better than what uh, we were originally thinking. Um, and we were rather scared to, uh, to see what was going to happen there. Um, we had a meeting with Greg the other week. and. Made us feel a little bit better, but we're still we're still concerned that uh, that this project is it's probably going to help, but at the same time we're thinking we got this beautiful old building, a building that's one of the oldest buildings in Peoria Heights, has the oldest built has the oldest business in Peoria in that building, and we just don't want to see it get pushed back and hidden behind a brand new free structure. So, but seeing the presentation tonight, I think we might uh, we might feel a little bit better about it. And if uh, we can continue the line of communication between Mr. Blake and staff and Greg and, and see some more of the drawings that are coming forth, then I think we'll um, have something more to look at. Yeah. Well, like I said, we'll create a computer rendering it's three dimensional, it's virtual, and the next step, I promise you, you'll see exactly how structures will look when the structure's up. And if you don't like it, then we'll move on change. Alright, and of course, there's always parking. You know, the 20, 24 extra spaces are going to be great, but, you know, we could always use more, so. Um, yeah, but, you know, again, I hope that people are going to be living in those units and walking. They're not going to be using cars to get to your place. I know I'm not. Well, that's
that's only five. It's, it's only five units, and we have we have weddings there that are between two and three hundred consistently every Saturday night, and all of those people are driving. They're all driving from okay. from Peoria, from Dunlap, from everywhere, everywhere across the country, and they're driving in, and you know they they are going to need parking also. So that's you know that's that's the issue there. Not they. Great, the residents that are there can walk, you know, to our space. The the whoever's going to be, no, no. yeah. You two, uh, your project, I think, was really the catalyst that started um, a lot of the new development in Heights. Other people have done great projects that have been all. It might not be just one thing, but certainly uh, you taking that building and investing all the time and money in, in that building, um, and the village and the county are in partnership with you, and we're not going to do anything that's going to. Um, harm your business in any way, we're hoping that this only helps it. I understand your concern about visibility, but we don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize you in any way. And I, I, one of the things that I've bragged about Kim is that um, he's been very open to try to, to work with, you know, collaborate with neighbors and other businesses in the community. And as you recall, Kim's first visit here, which I think was back in May or June, the very first business we took him to was, was yours because we were so proud of your building and your business and, and uh, we always will be and uh, thank you for your investment here at Heights. So um, we're going to continue to collaborate and the village well too to help you find the solution, you know, the parking issues that we all have here. Okay. I think, you know, let me, let me imagine one, one more uh, element to this guy, you know, and buying the table on across the street. It's a huge parking lot. You can use it. Oh yeah, we, we already use the Heights Flowers parking lot for our employees when it's uh, when we have such large parties going on. So that's that's always something that we've been doing anyway. And now you have a walkway. Right. Okay, good. Good walkway. Yeah. Thank you. One, one last thing about your parking. Mm -hmm. We have the potential for a parking lot right on the north side of the trail, right by the, the old Lyman building. building. It's right. uh, well, the the ditch right there. It's being filled in by our public works department right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. it couldn't be paved anytime soon because the, the fill was just dumped in. But it could have gravel on it, and it could it, it could be lighted. Maybe we could work with the park district, take down part of the fence. <clears throat> You'd have 50 cars in there, and people could walk right across the trail and walk right over to your business. That would be great. That's a great idea. I like that idea. Okay. All right. We'll keep talking. All right. Thank you. Okay. Keep talking. Anyone else on the public comment? Anyone else? Wayne, welcome. Then Wayne Brown, who is the city of the loss. Uh, I'm co chair of the Economic Development Committee. And we have uh, most of the business here. At that point, uh, uh, totally, fully endorsing this project. Uh, Jeff and Martha, you know, I think what, what Kim is wanting to do, you've already established the destination point in the whole area, moving from north to Washington to the north. And the destination point, Kim is wanting to make Terry Heights a destination point. And I think that uh, he is the one. Loving beyond uh, the, the opportunity he has given us. And I can tell you firsthand that uh, we're doing a lot of the work and uh, he is using first class materials. He wants to make this project. He wants the heights to be proud of it. He wants the to be proud of it. Uh, he does want to make it a destination point um, that we've all been to Galena. In St. Charles, Missouri, St. Charles, Illinois. Park is always a problem in these destination cities. And uh, people do find a place to park. I do know that we're going to try and, you know, the city and the other village and uh, try to know the way to, you know, obviously contribute to that. But uh, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, Troy would love to have a kid who's coming from the Eyes. And, uh, we haven't had any growth since 1985, and I do think that we have an opportunity right now to uh, be a resurgent of uh, our local community. And I want to thank Mr. Baker's staff uh, for uh, the 
I'd like to commit every single person in here working with the labor movement, business owners, and the fact that Ken is, is more than willing to listen to every single concern and question and idea. Um, I'm, again, a big fan of him, but as a member of the scene and a member of the public, I'm grateful for what he's doing. Uh, we're going to be looking for house in the next scene. Okay, there, uh, I'm going to read a letter from Clint Murray. He's the executive director of the West Central Building Trades. He couldn't be here tonight. He had another commitment, but he did send us a letter. It says, Dear Mayor Phelan, I am writing on behalf of my nearly 3,000 union members who reside and over a, in, in Peoria County and over 130 partner contractors who have offices in Peoria County. Many of the aforementioned live and have helped build Peoria Heights. We were excited when we heard Mr. Clinton's staff was investing substantial resources in the heights, and even more so upon verifying his commitment to the utilization of local union labor and contractors. Mr. Clinton's staff's development will provide hundreds of head of household paying construction jobs. These jobs not only provide economic stimulus in the form of wages, but also stimulus in the medical community, their suppliers, and so on through our insurance contributions. In addition, our members earn retirement, but only if they are working. Opportunities to work and apply their skills have not been as abundant in the past few years, making this and other developments Mr. Clinton's staff has planned <coughs> vital to the continued success of our community. Again, I'm excited for the future of Peoria Heights and hope you and the Board of Trustees pass the resolution to sell the great website to Mr. Clinton's staff. Sincerely, Clint Hurry, Executive Director, West Central Illinois Building and Construction Trades Council. So, one last call. One time as well. Again, we're going to vary just a little bit from regular order of business here. We're going to go right to Ordinance 2019-1581, an ordinance authorizing the sale of property located at 4414 and 4426 North Prospect Road. To KDB Group LLC, Trustee Mariscal, I ask for a motion to approve this. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance 2019 1581. Do I have a second? Second. I do. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Hart? Aye. Trustee Guy? Aye. Trustee Dan Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Diane Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Ryder? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. All right, that passes unanimously. Next, Ordinance 2019-1582, an ordinance authorizing the lease of property located at 1201 and 1203 Cayman Avenue to KDB Group LLC. Trustee Mariscal, I ask for a motion to approve this. Uh, do we need to include the amendatory language, Council? And if so, how would you phrase that? That if, if we're going to go about amending lease and purchase, uh, especially with a fixed price, that's something that we're going to need time to accomplish. I don't think we can just amend it on the spot here. Well, I mean, my understanding wasn't he going to set up a meeting with the surrounding residents as well? Yes. Will we want to do that prior to? issuing a binding vote on this, or what's the procedure we want to follow here? A lot of you're making motions, so... Um, so, a couple board members were... He, he, he might know that should we table this, which we can. I think I'll approve with the motion that he has an option to purchase in the future. I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, fine with you. Yeah. Okay. I, I, that's no, fine with you? <laughs> well, no, but it, no, that would be perfectly legal, and it, it would be simple to add a purchase option based on appraisal that I can work out with this attorney to at least. Okay. We can approve it subject to that. Yeah. The stand is satisfied? Absolutely. Okay. So do I have a second for the motion? Okay. Now, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Mark? Aye. Trustee Getsch? Aye. Trustee Daniel Aye. Trustee Daniel Aye. Trustee Gardner? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. All right, Tim, so you just bought a piece of property and leased another one below the 30 straight around the language, and uh, Greg's going to work with the neighbors. Perfect. All right, I guess we're going to let you go for the call, and we're going to conduct our own business. How's that?
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.